Hello. <laughs> okay, so I'm Raul, and uh, I'm here again with the great Mira Kim of Arbor Entertainment. Hello. So today we're going to be talking about a really cool 360 video, Son of Jaguar. So I don't know if you can if you can see it here. Uh, so Son of Jaguar, it's on it's on YouTube. So you can totally uh, see it on cardboard, or um, if you got a headset, you can totally play it. Um, it's a really cool 360 video uh, made by Jorge Gutierrez. Um, he also made uh, Book of Life, which is like the uh, major animated movie that came out a couple years ago. Um, it's about a Mexican uh, luchador uh, and one of his matches, um, which features some Day of the Dead um, themes in it, where it's like the whole lineage of his dad being a wrestler and um, having to um, have one match against like a guy who is really good. I don't want to give away everything, but you kind of show some examples here of of it. So I'll kind of skip through just so you kind of see some of the imagery, which is like really beautiful. Like look at the the colors, and so you can see some of the matches going on. Uh, they take you into uh, the arena, and even later, it seems like you go into, and even down here, you kind of go into the into the ring itself. Yeah, so you're kind of in. Yeah, you see, a little bit of a change. So might as well. That can probably be our. Um, actually, no, I'll pause it here. Or actually, I'll rewind it. So, try not to spoil too much of the story. And. Um, Okay, so you saw what I was talking about? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, okay, yeah. so I guess we can kind of talk about that first. Okay, so camera movement. And I think this, this is a, uh, something that we talk about a lot in 360. Like when we make 360 videos, right, um, people are really concerned about moving the camera. But at least in my opinion, if you don't move the camera, then it just gets so stationary and kind of like a flat. Like if, if, if someone has like, they set up a 360 camera, and then they have, they have everyone looking at it, like everyone around the camera just doing everything towards it. Then it becomes like you're looking at a flat image on Mars. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think part of it has to do with, um, so I, whenever I demo, I, I spend a lot of time watching uh, the people in the demo, just kind of like observing their body language mm -hmm. um, and trying to get a, a sense of like, you know, what, what parts do they enjoy, what parts do they not enjoy. But I would say most people, they try it, even though I tell them it's a, it's a static experience, you can't walk around in the space, people will still try to move in the space. And I think maybe like we also want to see, at least see movement in 360, um, because like we can't inherently actually move ourselves, you know? Um, and it just, because you have, when, you, when you're in the 360 space, because you can see everything, um, I think it, it kind of invokes a, a sense of curiosity, like um, mm -hmm. subconsciously maybe, yeah. so that like you know you do kind of just want to like oh go over there and see like see what those people over there are doing or um, yeah I I think that's pro probably part of the motivation behind like wanting to see movement. And also I guess maybe also the uh, because we're experimental. Like try stuff with you, and, and part of it too is like I remember when I first started shooting 360. Um, I kept reading about how you shouldn't move the camera, and like you know you're gonna make people sick. And I think part of us too is just in general, uh, since I think people are just curious and a little rebellious mm -hmm. by nature. Mm -hmm tell someone they can't do something they just want to do it more <laughs> yeah yeah well and then it's like going back to this um son of jaguar it's like so you have the the beginning scene where it sets up everything um and then the wrestler has to walk down a long corridor to the ring yeah and i think if you they, they kept the movements nice and smooth yeah. um i think that's what you have to do like yeah. if you're maybe moving too quickly then that's something that can make someone nauseated yeah. or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Um, they kept it really smooth. There was one part I guess that I um, where so that you, you, it takes you smoothly up to the ring itself, 
And then later on, all of a sudden, you kind of jump a few feet forward into the ring. Yeah. That was the only part that was kind of jarring because really, I had it in, in, I was in the goggles, and then all of a sudden, I kind of had to move, I was, you know, like to, to follow the action again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the only part that was a little bit jarring. So yeah. maybe I would have figured, like, maybe they would make it an even bigger movement, or maybe you're on the other side, or just make it more of an obvious thing instead of a subtle. Yeah. I'm kind of curious to see, like, um, how, because uh, in in that, I, I wonder how intentional, like, why, like, sometimes I kind of wish we had a director here, so we could ask these questions. Like, yeah. you know, like, why, if that was, why that was a, uh, an obvious, not an obvious, but like a, what do you call it, um, an intentional choice that they made. Mm -hmm. Because in animation, like, there's, there's not as much accidental stuff. Like, everything, like, every frame in an animation was intended to be there because it's got to be, like, drawn in and, like, um, and basically scripted in. Whereas, like, in live action, like, things happen that you don't always expect mm -hmm. to happen. So I am kind of curious about that, like, why they decided to make that slight movement. Yeah, nice. Like, they had tested it before mm -hmm. actually releasing it. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. So if... Uh the director, Jorge Gutierrez, is out there. Please reach out to us. Uh, Answer this one question for us. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah that, that's one question that I, I personally do have because I did notice that slight change. It's just like, it'd be like you're standing in one position and then you're just all of a sudden you're maybe two feet away. So um, I don't know if they wanted to set us up for being in position for this later, kind of like this grand uh, uh, moment that they have in the movie. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, we just don't know. Yeah. You know, but yeah. but yeah, if everything is usually intentional, especially with animation, because in his interview he talks about how difficult it was to animate in 360. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, we really um, yeah we really respect this endeavor and um, uh, but yeah, so like that'd be one of the main <laughs> questions. Yeah. I do. I also do agree with you though. I, I really like the nice smooth movement down the hallway, and I think smooth movement is definitely how from everything that I've watched, um, yeah, movements don't bother me at all, it's, it's the shakiness mm -hmm. of, like, the image, if, it's, if the image is shaking a lot, um, then I can, I can start feeling a little queasy, mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I definitely enjoy, there's something more, there's definitely something more exciting and more, like, exhilarating about watching shots than a movie, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the first one that I saw was actually uh, like an, not a NASCAR, but some kind of race car experience where they had like the camera like uh, hooked um, on the hood of a car. Mm -hmm. So you, when you look down, you see that you're on the, the hood of the car, but you're just doing like these racing loops. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the first time I was like, oh, I don't know what people are talking about. You can move the camera. Because yeah, before I saw that, I was, I was trying not to move the camera because then, like, you know, that's what was... Yeah. That was the advice that everyone was putting yeah. out there. And then I saw this, you know, race car experience and I was just like, oh, screw that, you know? Oh, <laughs> totally. You, you can totally move the camera. Oh, totally. And then um, um, if you don't move the camera, then you can also have action happening that's not facing the camera too. And I think that's yeah. what happened in this, this uh, Son of Jaguar where it's like you do have the wrestling match and things are happening where it's going past you and even kind of behind you, which I think all that stuff is great, where you do yeah, want to yeah. be, because I, I actually I usually watch these kinds of videos, I usually watch them standing up anyway, because I really want to be able to move around to yeah. see everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, like if, so it's kind of, kind of going back to your point where it's like, you can even have a 360 camera on a race car, right? <laughs> and then like yeah. have a good experience, yeah. or you can have it where it's like, you're having a wrestling match and uh, the action is happening on all sides of you, or like mm -hmm. where movement is going past you. Yeah. And I think that's what um, makes sure that the experience isn't like just a 2D experience yeah. again, even though it's 360. Yeah. I guess kind of going back to this, um, I do remember uh, I watched the, I think a boxing 
boxing series of 360. Mm -hmm. And they had the cameras set up on like the, the corners mm -hmm. so that like as the boxers would like come closer to a corner, like they would they would cut to that corner. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought that was kind of interesting. I would have been kind of curious like how this would have been different if it's, you know, when you're on that one side and you're on the side of the son of, you're like on the son of Jaguar, like corner, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, like, you get transported to the other side, like, the opponent's corner, like, how mm -hmm. does that impact how you feel about it when you're suddenly looking at it from the other perspective, yeah. you know, from the yeah. opponent's perspective versus, like, the, the protagonist. Yeah, actually, that might have been really yeah, cool. Kind of yeah, because in, in, the, in the movie, or in the video, right, um, uh, the son of Jaguar's family, like his wife and I think the littlest kid, um, they go to his corner, but you're stand where the camera is, it's like you're standing in the uh, along the length of the ring. So you, you, you'd have to turn to look at them. But it would be really interesting if you had if they had the camera in the in that corner. And so if you look to the side you actually see the side of the his wife and his family's head looking in too. Yeah. That would, yeah. I think that would look really cool because uh, again that that to me kind of keeps like the whole three 3D aspect alive there where you turn and they're not looking at you or it's like a flat, like a uh, uh, passport photo, yeah, right? yeah. but they're also looking at the action. So in, yeah. in that way it can be, uh, you can direct the audience as to what you want them to be watching as well. Yeah. I think too, like, you know, like you're talking about how, you know, it's, I've also ha haven't really watched any experiences that I've enjoyed where people are like, uh, acting to the, the lens. Um, I, mean, I think it's because so far the pieces that I've seen, when people are talking, like when I'm in the experience and I'm seeing these actors like talk to me, they're talking to me like I'm a five-year-old kid. You know, their their speech pattern is slower, and I feel like you know uh, their their pitch is a little bit higher. The way that people talk to kids, and so maybe. That's part of part of it is like also like understanding like uh, how it, if actors are going to if you're gonna have actors talk like directly to the lens, I think it has to be you have to tell them who this person is and try to get them to not talk to this camera like it's a kid. Mm, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure like every single experience that I've seen where like the actors are talking to the camera, they're always talking to you know. Like they're, I, I feel like there's something in their body language and the and the way they their pitches and the just the pacing of their speech is like they're talking to a five year old child. Huh. Well, then that would just put it'd be really off putting. They just would maybe even turn it off, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I guess there was I did watch this one experience. I can't remember the name of it where. Um, that you're just riding along in this car and people are just kind of like uh, hanging out and like will kind of like kind of glance back and like make comments or like talk to you mm. but um, I think maybe that's the only one where I didn't feel like I was a five-year-old child that someone was talking to mm. but just I was just like another friend in the car mm. um, yeah it could be like something yeah it's like like you were saying, it's like this is still kind of a so new that people are experimenting with all these different things. So maybe they're so excited, so then they're just like looking back at the camera, like but talking yeah. as, as like like you're a kid. But what the other thing that um, uh, 360 video tends to be used for is like more and more is like reporting news. Mm -hmm. So um, they uh, they wouldn't talk to the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, so. that's true. That's, that those are different. The journalism uh, pieces are definitely different. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always, I've really enjoyed those. Those have been some of my favorite experiences to see. Yeah, so I think maybe some filmmaker or three people doing 360, they should be uh, maybe taking that into consideration, you know, or at least find your audience. So yeah, don't yeah, necessarily yeah. Uh, uh, promote it as like a uh, film for adults when you're going to be talking down to them. You know, yeah, if, yeah. It's, if it's for adults, then talk to them like adults. You know. Yeah, and I also like one of the things that I find kind of interesting is um, I think there was this wave of like uh, experiences where you know um, filmmakers wanted to put put their audience in the shoes of a specific person. Mm -hmm. By and uh, I, 
I think like initially the first thing that would come to mind is oh just make that person the character that you want them to be. But I think that's kind of difficult. I mean, now that I think about it, like later at first I was like, oh, that, I guess that could that could work. But now that I've watched a lot of these like um, first person experiences, um, if I don't have a frame of reference of what I'm supposed to feel or who I'm supposed to be or what my life should be like in this person's shoes, mm -hmm. like it's it's there's this weird disconnect and I just can't quite like um, become as engaged. Mm -hmm. But I have noticed like the pieces where I'm not necessarily like told that I'm a specific person, but I'm just more of a fly in the wall kind of thing, where um, I don't I, I don't feel like there's any kind of expectation for me as a viewer other than to just like experience the world there. Um, that's when I felt more connected with the characters and I felt more sympathy or empathy, you know, for what's, what's happening in the situation. Um, so I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see like as more, uh, as more filmmakers are doing both, you know, the first person experiences and like the um, kind of more, um, I guess, om omnipresent experiences. <laughs> uh, like, you know, uh, how like people will perceive them. Yeah. Well then for uh, Son of Jaguar then, did you kind of feel like you, you could um, empathize with the family or the situation? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Because like, and you know, and I, there's, there is some kind of a little, um, I think to me, uh, maybe it's part of my, maybe it's just my personality, but like when um, someone looks at me and is like expecting something from me and I, like the, I have a little bit of a panic mode. I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> and so I mean, that's also what brings me out of like the stories of the first person experiences too. Um, but when I can just watch, I can just watch this family and see, you know, uh, and connect with the things that, that I know myself and, and I've experienced myself with my family. I'm like, oh, okay, I, I understand this. I understand where this kid is coming from and I understand where this, you know, the, the pride that the dad has, like, you know, he's, and, you know, um, the concern of the mother. And, and so I can relate to, like, uh, a little, you know, a little bit of each of those characters without having uh, any kind of expectation on them. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you don't have to actually be them in their yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have to be like, you know, I don't have to, yeah, I don't have to be anything. I just have to watch. Yeah. And I think that's, I think for me that works better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, definitely um, show that like, there's people with different preferences then too, right? Some people want to maybe try to manipulate the story more so then kind of hear, I hear that sometimes where it's like, whether 360 video um, uh, won't be as effective as maybe creating some experience where you can actually walk around or um, control something, pick up something, or um, um, yeah. So I mean, but I think there, there could be like different preferences. That, yeah, 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 yeah. And I think too, it's just like everything. Like um, you know, in filmmaking, um, one of the things that I that I feel like is is something that people need to remember is, you know, what does the story mean? Like, sometimes, um, sometimes your story does need more interactivity, mm -hmm. you know, for it to work. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just need it to be a positive experience for it to work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need it to be, like, on, you know, on a, on a frame screen for it to work better because we have to, like, you know, have certain cuts that will make the, you know, that actually propel the story and, and like, have some kind of purpose. But, um, I think when uh, you use, I guess, a tool as just like a novelty, then I think it gets, uh, it's, it's, it's fun at first, but then like, it's, it's not really like memorable. Yeah. Like, people don't like, mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's what uh, is the distinction between like a good, a well-told story, a well-told movie, or, you know, whether it's a short or a feature or a play, like mm -hmm. it's memorable when um, you think about like 
what benefits the story and not just like, oh, like doing a party trick. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a really important point. Um, and yeah, um, no, be totally, because I think we would both have theater backgrounds too, so mm -hmm. like for us, I think, um, I think that's why it'd be, I wouldn't say easier for us to think in 360, but um, like for us, it's it's not like flat on the page. And this is something that I always thought like when I was in, still in the university where it's like, I would talk to like English majors or even some film, uh, some film or film, I got into an argument with one of my film professors because um, I was trying to talk about more about like even the reaction of, of the audience to the film. And he's like, no, he's all about like what's, what's in the frame, you know, the mise en scene yeah. and all that stuff. And it's like, well, that's part of it, but there's there's a viewer there too, right? So like, it's almost like the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? If no one's there to watch your film, who cares, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, or sometimes even by reading something that, uh, even talking to an English major about Shakespeare is like, it's pretty crazy sometimes because they're just thinking like words on page, but as a, someone with theater background, we're thinking like real life, actors on a stage and, and, and the stage can be um, in, in any way I mean it can either be done with people in different areas like uh, you know seated all kinds of ways and um, or even say like with Kabuki there's a there's a big long um, walkway that goes through the side of the audience where it's like they use that too to get to the stage and so the stages can be any way really or even done theater and yeah. uh, like just in public where it's like you try to do some political guerrilla theater stuff and so we're thinking that way with not only the the what you see our story but then how people are reacting uh, I yeah. think that really uh, works for 360 yeah yeah I think too like um, like you said like sometimes I, I think uh, Having some experience or having experience in theater helps you uh, release control or that need for mm -hmm. control. Maybe mm -hmm. I could be wrong. There could be, you know, uh, people who are in theater who are really very controlling. But um, my first play that I did, that I directed, um, I was uh, <laughs> so our show went up, and I, you know, I sat in the audience. And at the end of the show, I was like, hey, great job, you know, and, and I would give like little notes here and there. And my producer took me aside and he's like, stop, like, you're done. Your job is done. Like, don't <laughs> give them any more notes. Like, now you have to just let it go and let it be. Mm. And um, I think that's one of the things that's interesting about theaters because like, yeah, once, once your show is up, people are there at live in, you know, in the audience. And you can't, you can't give your actors any minor adjustments or say, oh, like, oh, wait, no, you should, I think you should actually, like, instead of, like, picking up the jar at this point, you, have to, you should pick it up at this point because it's more impactful or it's not as distracting, you know, whatever. And, um, but yeah, that is some, one of the lessons that I distinctly remember about theater is that you're basically forced to let go. Mm. Because, yeah, once, once the show's up, it's up, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to like in, I think in film it's a little bit different. I mean, there's budgetary things, but at some point, like, unless you have like unlimited resources, you have to stop filming and yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you can't do the thousand take or something. Yeah, with um, thousands of, of extras. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, I do like that, that lesson. I don't know if you've had that experience. Um, oh, where like basically like you learn that you have to let things go and just kind of like let uh, let the audience uh, experience what they want to experience and take from it what they want to take yeah. out of it. Like I can't I can't make anyone feel a certain way just because yeah. like yeah. I've changed the walking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And they're always going to be viewing it from different angles, and that's the thing. Where it's like it's in kind of 3D anyway, so depending on where they're see, sitting, but then also too, like, you know, they can actually turn and see other audience members and stuff watching at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, so. and that's, and that is a whole other experience too. It's like, um, you know, sometimes, like, I would, 
I, whenever I did a show, I, I would watch, um, I would sit in the audience of every show, not to, not to give notes or anything, but because I, I love the, I just love the energy mm -hmm. of the audience, mm -hmm. and like being, being with them, and it was almost like every night, even though I'd already seen, because I'd, you know, be rehearsing with the actors for like, um, anywhere from like four to six weeks mm -hmm. and so you know I'd seen the show already like two or three times a week for four to six weeks mm -hmm. but every time I sat in the audience um, it, I felt like I was watching a brand new show mm -hmm. it, was, it was always different to me it was always something it was always a new show to me every night so I mm -hmm. thought that was interesting too yeah. and I think one of the things that uh, I've heard also I guess I'm like circling back to that like uh, I you know I've I've heard I've heard people say that you know there's a lot of potential for 360 to be a uh, a multi view experience where like I guess is that the right word uh, where people will go back and watch it over mm -hmm. so to see what they've missed mm -hmm. I haven't seen anyone or seen any stats or numbers uh, supporting that yet mm -hmm. but I could see that potential because you know just from my experience of having watched my shows multiple nights mm -hmm. and always feeling like it was a different show because I would catch different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Do, do you feel like uh, you would watch Thunder Jaguar a few times? I would, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I, and actually, I, I have because <laughs> we were going to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, totally. You see different things, more details. Yeah. Always, and there's, in 360, there's always more to see. Yeah. yeah. I wonder though sometimes though, whether or not people would actually go back and watch it again just because of time. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. um, cause like the, when I demo our shorts, people will, will say, oh, you know, I, I wonder what I miss, but they never asked to go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. Like no one, no one is asked to go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. They'll watch it once and they'll be like, oh, that was fine. And they'll, they say, oh, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm not sure what I would have, what I've missed. And sometimes I'll ask them, you know, do you want to see it again? And they're like, oh, no, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So even even though theoretically there's that potential that people will watch 360 multiple times just to see what they miss, um, I'm just kind of curious like when when we actually get to see those numbers, you know, since we get to hopefully uh, get more data as far as like you know the viewership. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about how that will actually play out. Yeah, I think also too it's like then it's our job to create compelling content as well and uh, uh, we'll see I think as we move into the future it becomes even easier to like yeah. put on some headset I think that'll really help where you, you don't have headsets that are connected to your PCs yeah, and all yeah. that stuff then the more uh, free you can make it then uh, I think the better yeah yeah definitely I'm uh, I'm most excited to see um, if, if like they'll actually have uh, an HMD that is both AR and VR mm -hmm. that can go, you know, just mm -hmm. adjust the, the transparency, mm -hmm. adjust, because um, uh, I think that that could be the thing that actually like makes it more appealing to a broader audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think part of it, like when you're, it's hard to, it's sometimes hard to convince myself to to do a VR experience or like a yeah VR experience outside the comfort of like someone that I know like so that I, I uh, I'm not vulnerable to the world outside mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. like the reality mm -hmm. uh, when I'm in kind of like what I feel like a safe space mm -hmm. um, but I maybe mean, that's just the nature of how like our society is right now like our mentality is just not as trusting could be because yeah, well, I mean you're covering your eyes or sometimes even your ears and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's where the domes fit in, you know, and all the different types of cylinders where you can get basically, or even like say if it was an IMAX screen, just completely surrounding, like a, yeah. you're in a cylinder IMAX and yeah. you can get mass people watching these things and they can they can turn around. Yeah. They'd be standing up, but yeah. yeah. Like I, I, that's why I like to watch it too. I mean, just like stand up so you can actually look around. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did, I did like, the, um, I went to, um, this was a while ago, um, like three, maybe three or four years ago, I, I 
somewhere, uh, I want to say, man, I can't even remember where it is, but it's here in LA, mm -hmm. and they have, like, you know, they do these domes, and um, I watched, you know, I think the scene where, you know, you're just seeing the night sky, you know, the stars, and the galaxy, mm -hmm. and uh, that was pretty cool, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's like being, uh, it's like having gone, driven up into the mountains and you're just like up and looking, yeah. staring up in the night sky without all the city lights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, we kind of got off topic, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, way off topic, but no, that's totally fine. I think, um, either, I mean, either way, I, I really enjoyed Son of Jaguar. I think yeah, it, there's a lot to it there and I uh, hope uh, Jorge Gutierrez Keeps on yes. making more stuff, and yeah, that. very well told story. Which is, yeah. I mean, we need more of that. Mm -hmm. More mm -hmm. well told stories in, in 360. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, I think we can probably end it there. And um, so, thank you for talking with me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me.